Our base is under attack! <laughs> Possible Creatures is an RTS developed by Relic Entertainment. It was initially released in 2003 and received an additional free expansion in 2004 in the form of Insect Invasion. The game later came to Steam in 2015 and was the perfect excuse to revisit the game. I still have the original CD and sleeve tucked away in a cabinet somewhere. What made, and still to this day makes, Impossible Creatures such a standout game? Unlike traditional RTS games in which you select a faction and are provided with preset units, faction abilities, and upgrades, Impossible Creatures has a shared tech tree and structures for all players. This seems like it would make most games bland mere matches. However, Impossible Creatures allows you to build your units, and therefore your factions so to speak, before you even step into the game to create an army unique to you on top of others. The game places the emphasis of its strategies before the game even begins. Should I go into the next game with an army of cheap, quick to produce units and rush or overwhelm the enemy? Well, they produce defenses in the form of sound beam towers, and now your little ant wolves are dead on arrival. What about using large late game ground units? You have that mammoth elephant hybrid you named Timmy Two Trunks sure is strong on the ground. But what's your plan to counter the enemy's vulture frogs that are swooping down on you? You have to consider balance when constructing an army, and bringing the tools to counter whatever your enemy may bring at each stage of the game, while still determining your end goal. Creatures have tiers that require your a magical uh, flying machine to be upgraded. This means that you need a mixture of early, mid, and late game units to produce a well-balanced army. Combining high-tier animals such as elephants with low-tier animals such as coyotes will still require the high-tier upgrades to produce. This allows you to plan your own natural progression and a tech tree of sorts. Each animal also brings along bonuses and abilities, as well as different stats based on the combination of parts used to create your impossible creature. A frog's head may provide lower damage than something with sharp teeth, however it does come with a nice darting tongue attack to compensate. Abilities also exist to take into consideration when building your creature. Whether it's the explosive quill burst that damages all units in range, the digging capability of underground animals, the artillery attacks of rocks spitting creatures, or perhaps the sonar pulse of whales that works very similar to a farseer from Warcraft 3, using farsight to provide vision of the map. Dumb. Many others exist, and experimentation is key to finding the perfect balance to your devious creations, or just make a horse. The only real downside is that there's no platypus in the game. However, this is okay, since they're already in front of all that is sensible and natural, no matter how cute they may be. But now imagine that it had a bear's head. Oh, and this is the scale. Another aspect to consider is the three creature-producing buildings and their creature types. Flying creatures have wings of some form and can take to the air, but require a structure to be built before they can be produced. Aquatic units, or units using aquatic parts to swim, require the construction of the world's most expensive floaty. Ground units require the basic unit producing structure to be built. All of these factors must be considered when determining the perfect team of up to nine units. However, if you're feeling particularly uninspired or simply want to try out a different playstyle and learn through the developer's presets, you can select one of the armies owned by the main characters of the campaign. Rex has a focus on close combat and quickly getting into the enemy's face. Fast aggressive tactics will throw your opponent off guard. Balance is the key to versatility, and versatility will allow you to be prepared for anything. Lucy focuses on having an all-around balanced army to address most situations. There's a penalty for being a traitor where I come from. Death. Yoka focuses on air units and harassing the opponent's economy. Oh my. Dr. Ganglion focuses on staying a constant threat through speed and health regeneration. Perhaps you should select a different army. My creatures are likely too much for you to handle. And Upton Julius focuses on the long game, building a strong economy to dominate in the end tier. You may have noticed I skipped one. That's because everything I told you so far about these characters is pointless, since only one matters. I'm a little teapot, short and blah, 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 and bore me outright. Joking aside, Whitney is a mid-game focus build. There are many maps to choose from in the multiplayer or scenario mode. 
and each offers a unique biome and color scheme to keep matches feeling fresh while still learning the map layouts. The goal of the maps is to destroy the enemy lab, this being the classic kill the enemy base mode prevalent in RTS games. So there's no need to worry about that one burrowed unit in the corner of the map hiding away. The economy is focused around two resources, coal and electricity, as well as having a population capacity. In this way, the economic side of Impossible Creatures is relatively simple, similar to games like Warcraft 3, Starcraft 2, or Armies of Exigo, in which you balance a common resource that can be depleted without expanding, and a more abundant resource that's used predominantly for upgrades, along with a population cap to stop intense snowballing to a degree. Hedgemen are the gatherers and builders for Impossible Creatures, right. the backbone of your economy and key to success. Here they are collecting ore, building structures, breaking structures to build structures on the ruins of their foes, building a secret bay. Hey, well, wait a minute. Henchmen are important to success, but they're also not helpless in a fight. Just pay attention to your initial coal mines so you don't end up making the long exodus to the expansions your enemy has likely already captured. Hello? Uh, hello. Henchmen under attack! Electricity is obtained by building lightning rods and slapping giant box fans on geysers. The turbines are dangerous as they're placed further from your base. However, they can be upgraded to provide large amounts of energy. Similarly, workshops can be built by coal mines further from the base, similar to granaries in Age of Mythology. However, without providing upgrades for your workers' productivity. Upgrades come from the genetic amplifier building for your creature upgrades and the research clinic for henchmen. This provides some buffs to stats, but also some unique effects like henchmen learning how to heal the creatures. Combat can become hectic when large battles ensue or multiple players are fighting, but the actual combat gameplay of impossible creatures is pretty standard with its share of micromanagement albeit not to the extreme scale of some other games. The focus in the game is still dominantly designing your ideal army and adapting to your opponent's army through careful use of your toolkit and determining where to allocate upgrades in the genetic amplifier. The real charm in Impossible Creatures is certainly the freedom to create and experiment with the different creature combinations, and while the combat and core systems are designed well enough to keep the game engaging, the greatest joy is seeing your oddball armadillo dragonfly well, it's way to victory against a stampede of shark hippos. This is where the game truly excels, and why to this day I will always list it among my favorite games of all time. If a strategy fails, then you analyze the weaknesses in your team, and determine whether or not you lost because your army, at its best, wasn't up to the opponents, or if you can swap out the front legs of your one creature for ones that will provide digging, and allow you to maneuver and outplay your opponent better. When in doubt, you can always go defensive route. No building. All right. Okay. Ready, boss. No building is up. Hello. Ready, boss. All right. Hello. You're the boss. The building's done. Level 5 research is complete. Ready, boss. They're destroying our buildings! The critters are under attack! Uh, hello. Huh, I've got one of those things after me! Done, done building. Well, that's what I call turtling.
Our base is under attack! The critters are 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 under the critters are under attack! The critters are under attack! The critters are under attack! Our base is under attack! The critters are under attack! So how about the campaign? Possible Creatures has a solid campaign that tells a compelling story with a cast of interesting characters. One thing I must admit is that, as a kid when the game first came out, I spent most of my time on the creature creator and messing about in custom games. I know that I played through a decent amount of the story, but ultimately did not complete it until much later when I revisited the game. I won't go into too much detail about the campaign story, but if you're interested in playing it for yourself, I highly recommend it. With the release of the Steam Edition, it's easy to get a hold of, and certainly worth the $10 price tag for messing about in the creator alone. Bring friends, too, as the game is definitely more enjoyable seeing the wild creations that others bring to the table. I'll briefly mention how the story kicks off, so if you'd like absolutely zero story spoilers, then skip to the timestamp. Alright, time to send the scorpion wolves after them when they run. The story starts off with the protagonist, Rex Chance, receiving word from his father and renowned scientist, Dr. Eric Chankov whom Rex presumed to be dead for years. Rex is asked to come to a remote chain of islands to see his father, and he quickly gets up close and personal with the local wildlife. Scenes that seek to impose a layer of dread for the protagonist weave well into the sillier aspects of the game proudly displays. Characters have their own charm, too, that complements the overall silliness of the game while portraying the action and adventure genre well. The overall atmosphere of the game gives a unique feeling by blending elements of science fiction, industrialization, and adventure movies such as Indiana Jones. The sounds and music play off one another to set every scene. While the characters are very much playing their roles and archetypes, the writing and voice acting makes you feel invested in the antics of the characters. Mr. Chance, regardless. The 
The campaign handles the creature creation in a fun way, by having you track down creatures throughout the missions and tag them, in order to add their DNA to your collection, to create like creatures in the normal manner. It's a neat way to tie rewards into objectives, similar to heroes gaining items for bonus objectives in other RTS games. Gotta catch them all. Animals you've collected to design combat. Hello! Hello! Similar to the multiplayer maps, the islands that you explore for the campaign are varied in biome and build off the characters. There's a big beast up near a temple that's developed a real taste for sled dogs. And we're all at the sled dogs! So in conclusion, what is it about Impossible Creatures that made it one of my most cherished games of all time? Framing it in the context of being a kid, the game provided the tools to go wild and create countless combinations of creatures like one of those books where you flip the segments to create an animal or monster, or a game of exquisite corpse with the constraint of only using animal parts. The game offered a unique approach to the RTS genre that sadly hasn't really been replicated since to the same degree. Luckily, there are many mods and a still active community updating them to add additional creatures to the game for you to explore if you're feeling an itch for more. Possible Creatures is an amazing game, and I'd recommend everyone look into it, even if only to continue the interest in novel ideas such as those presented in Impossible Creatures, and to finally settle that argument you had on whether a frog ant would beat a lemming coyote in a 1v1. I have a backlog of games that I have a lot of passion for, that I'd like to make reviews of soon, but I'd love to hear your feedback on the format of this review, whether or not you like the pacing, anything you'd like to see different, or what you'd like to see more of. Have a great day, everyone, and thank you for listening to me talk about one of my all-time favorite games. <laughs> ha 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 ha!